It's my birthday. <laughs> Your birthday's in December, though. Yeah, I'm joking. We're back, unfortunately. My dad's here. He doesn't want to talk. Hello. Okay, he says hi. Mm. Dad, you're going on the air, Annette. That's great. Two hours for the work, just in case. Oh yeah, Baskin Robbins reopened. I thought it was always open. It got it shut down due to a storm. Oh, wait, the one over here. Not yeah. Me. I was thinking of the other one. The one closer to my home. They just reopened, I noticed. You hear that, Dad? What? Baskin Robbins reopened. Oh, did they? Yeah. We just bought ice cream. <laughs> That's your problem. Last time, we, uh... We played for a small amount of time before we spent most of the rest of the day playing Splatoon. And then watching the rest of Freddy Fazbear the movie. Speaking of which, it's Dana's sequel, dated December 5th, 2025. It really didn't need one. Yes, it did. No, no. And then it's getting a third movie after that. It made money, of course it has to have a sequel. Whatever you say. They're gonna do live action toy animatronics. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to how the internet is reacting to that. Toy Chica. Yeah. <laughs> I know the internet enough to know that it's just a wretched hive. Yeah. During the movie, I pointed out how MatPat is very, very, his, one of his last FNAF theories was for the movie, and he thinks Vanessa is a robot. Because, of course. Man can't go without calling someone a robot. Just Like, like if you were listening to MatPat, this entire series would be like 95% robots and like only one guy was ra was actually around. And uh, and Steven was like, hey, what, why did you say that? And and I was like, well, he says her, perform her performance feels robotic. And he was like, that's called bad acting. <laughs> The funny part is, after watching that mo that entire movie, I could easily say, she's one of the better actors. <laughs> but he was like, no, I think she was intentionally directed to be robotic. I I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's bad direction. <laughs> I should uh, I should know, I watched that movie, it's not well directed. <laughs> I know. Like, everyone's kind of off. It's art. Matthew Lillard kills it, though. Matthew Lillard kills it because he's Matthew Lillard and he has literally decades of experience. Playing Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> Zoic Scoob. I just killed five kids. Rot Road. I kid, I kid. Matthew is easily one of my favorite Shaggies. Um. No, not the live action movie. I actually don't like it. <laughs> uh, but in general, well, he's been like the voice of Shaggy since. Like. What? What? No, after what's just gonna be doing? Yeah. He's been the voice of Shaggy forever and a half now, and I've loved just about all these performances. So, see, we do two monsters unleash as a work of art. What other movie has a has a post credit scene that shows a code for the Game Boy Advance tie-in game? It is actually. <laughs> yes, that's a very real thing, by the way. Look it up. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be completely honest here. I've played that Game Boy game. Yeah. It's not good. Well, it's a movie tie-in game. Um, also, after we finish watching Friday Friday Night Friday Fazbear, um, Friday Nights at Freddy's, as a talk show host called it, to which Scott Cawthorn commented, I get no respect. It's okay, Scott Cawthorn. I <laughs> literally just pulled a Ronnie Dangerfield. And... Um, so, uh, we were like, Yo, Matt, a Thunder Magic, let's for, have some of that. Before we left, we I was like, you know what, I'm gonna browse the Xbox 360 stores, because it's gonna fucking die soon. And, uh, we came across two Yu-Gi-Oh games that are digital only, and they will be lost of time. And then I did some research, and it turns out they won't be lost of time, because they're also on PS3. 
But why would I want to touch my PS3? So yeah, they're being lost of time. On a good console. Sorry, PS3 fans. Your console's stupid. You can't convince me otherwise. Am I right? No, 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 I'm not about to piss people off right now. Okay. I'm kind of busy... Yeah. Like, trying to buy new items. Um... I basically just used up all my art points because a bunch of stuff just yeah. unlocked. And also, there was actually a an update to the Xbox 360 store recently. Um, ah, crap! I I just I just bought this one. Oh wait, no, this is the upgraded version. Rip. <sighs> hmm. Okay. Hmm. What else you got? Wow. So, like, I'm assuming this game runs to, like, day 358 or something. Uh, there are times where it will, it will skip just several chunks of days because mm. nothing's happening or someone's in a coma or something like that. But, like, it goes, like... Three five eight. Uh, if I'm correctly, yeah. yeah. The reason for that is because by the uh, if you add up the three five eight days in this game, and the seven days in the prologue of Kingdom Hearts two, it makes an entire year, which is the mm -hmm. amount of time Rox is alive. I see. Um. So I guess we're like almost halfway done with the game. If there's like a big bunch of skipping. Uh, we've already gone through one of the skips. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I just looked at the day counter. And I, I just used that as, how much time do we have left? Because, unlike the other two Kingdom Hearts games we plays, I, I know nothing about this, basically. And maybe that's... One, six, two. And maybe that's improved my perception of it, but we'll see. Uh, the but, thing is, this game was essentially designed to be played in, like... Sure. literal, like, train ride, so yeah, it's not a, exactly a long game. Yeah. As I was saying, uh, there was actually an update for the Xbox 360 store. Uh, well, that's a good thing I bought the, uh, I got the upgraded one because this is yeah. much better. <laughs> uh, select games have been given permanent discounts until the store closes. Some of them go for as low as a dollar. Or 69 cents. You can't see it, but I did a thumbs up. Cool. And there will be more games added on the 18th. But one day in June and one day in July. So yeah, I bought like a bunch of games on permanent sale. Because I had to. Hey, Lux, I gotta go over to Middle Park. Okay. I'll be back in a while. How long's a while? An hour or two. Okay. Okay? Okay. You guys have fun. No. Well, I will. Mostly be a Splatoon. I know. Okay, see you guys. Ow. I also found this comically large uh, fake knife in a box. That my before, any, uh, before any uh, person watching this wonders why I mostly be a Splatoon, it's because uh, I've already we're... played this game like that's three different we're... times. <laughs> and that's what we're playing. And you know, I bring the life and energy into it. No, I don't. Oh, also, there was a there was a news at the very beginning when we very first started the Kingdom Hearts series. I was complaining about how the PC versions of this series were exclusive to Epic Games. Yeah, um, it's been announced they're coming to Steam on the thirteenth of June. Thank God, let's be honest. With you. Woo! It's that melody of memory that's still Epic Games only. Yeah. For now, at least, but it might come. Um. And I, I said I would I would give Kingdom Hearts 1 a second chance if they do it to Steam. Steam. So I can mod it. Now I guess I have to. Mm, well, it's not like mod, it's not like modding doesn't change up the I game know. a lot. I just hope it doesn't disable achievements, at least. Because the only mod I would implement is just uh, enable Neverland Flight everywhere. <laughs> and nothing else. 
Um, but yeah, 1.5 plus 2.5, 2.8, and 3 with the DLC included, they're all coming to Steam. You can delete your Epic Games account now. Joke's on you, fucko. I've never had one. Me? I, well, I have one, but I don't use it. Not even for the free games. Because ironically, there is a reason I do not... But like, I've held up, and it's because I do not trust Epic Games at all. Yeah. Like, at all. Yeah. From what I've heard, um, the 1.5 1, 1 plus 2.5 and 2.8 are all actually just launchers, and all the games are just separate EXE files. Which means it closes and then reopens into them. Hmm. And it... And this will have some changes from the PS4 version, such as progress bars. So in how far you are in a certain game. Those do nothing, but they're there. I mean... Yeah, they don't really functionally do anything, yeah. but let's be honest here, it's better having them than not. Yeah, and the Disney Interactive logo has been replaced with just the Disney logo. Because Disney Interactive is dead. <sighs> I got nothing to say about that one, actually. Yeah, that's that's just a minor change. So, no, I just don't. I just never cared much for Disney Interactive. Yeah. Um. And I don't have a PC here, and I don't want to buy it on another platform. So we're just gonna be sitting to PlayStation for the, for the rest of the games. Also, we've already done two of them on PlayStation, so consistency. I like consistency. Um, but it will be one of those games that has a sh single achievement list instead of just four separate trophy lists. Ooh. Good luck trying to earn all 197 achievements. Please don't. Anyways. Today's May 29th, I think. Yeah, that's today. Um... What's happened in the past four weeks? Oh yeah, nothing. Well, Nintendo put out a tweet saying uh, they're gonna announce the Switch 2. I think, I think announced before the end of March of 2025, and there will be a Direct next month. And they already said, no Switch 2 news at that Direct, shut up. That won't stop people from complaining anyway, because they're stupid. Okay, but let's be honest here, like, they were gonna, they were gonna say that, like, if they didn't say that at all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they would have immediately assumed Switch 2 if they yeah. didn't. If they didn't bother to say, "Hey, before we before we we can like go further, let's just say this right now. Next track will have literally no news, so please shut the fuck up." Now, what will they announce that they have in store for the rest of 2024? Uh, probably like uh, hmm. considering how we now we know that the Switch Two is coming. And Chances are, they're probably going to be, like, at the very least, revealing that some of them are going to be coming to Switch 2. Some of the games that they've already announced are going to be also coming to Switch 2. Yeah. Be they launch tiles or not. You know, just kind of update these. Yeah. The release on that on that stuff. Yeah. Current rumors, or current talks, say that it's going to release in early 2025. Cost around 400 bucks or so. And it will have backwards compatibility with all Switch 1 games. Thank God, I would have shot them if it didn't. Um, I think if we're not getting like a Pokemon release this year, then I think around the holiday season they'll put a Gen 1 on it. So that's just a shot in the dark, though. Hmm. Considering the next game is Legend of ZA. Honestly, that uh, like that might be the easy option. Like, 
tied people over until the next until the next yeah. uh, like time that they can talk about uh, the switch too. Yeah. Just give a, a crowd pleaser like, hey. Pokemon and so actual well they're spinoffs but like red blue yellow. Yeah. Gen two will come in the, in the two years later. Because there's no way they're going to drop Gen 1, 2, 3 all at once. Yeah. Um. Yo, look at this one. This is the up this is essentially the upgraded version of that last sword ad. Uh, the the one that you that you uh, mostly do air attacks on. Ah, uh, I see. Um. Yeah, that's just my guess. I yeah. don't I don't think we'll get any new uh, NS NSO like consoles until Switch 2 comes out. Honestly, I, c I could easily see them, like, re revealed for, like, DS for, like, NSO uh, for Switch 2. Yeah. I did say DS would be tricky, but I... But they do. can always just do the thing that, uh, you know, I the iPhone does. Yeah. Or, you know, you could use the right stick to control, like, a cursor on the touch screen and press the ZL and ZR buttons and, like, tap, tap, tap. It has a touch screen. I don't know why you'd think that you can't just In use TV it. TV mode. Oh, uh, Well, that's basically what... The world into you did. They literally used yeah. the fucking motion controls. Yeah. It's not as fun. I'm gonna let you know this right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then I'll, I'll be begging every day for them to add Pokemon Black and White. You know, they, they'll probably only reveal the the Pokemon games as desperation moves. Let's be honest here. Because I think this is a shot in the dark, but I think Gen One on NSL will happen this year because. Uh, Legend CA isn't coming out until 2025. Which is a heavy chance that it might be a launch style for two, really. Yeah, or a fucking January release, as uh. Arch CS was. And yeah. That's all I have to say, Ash. <laughs> they'll do Gen 1, and then eventually they'll. If they drop Gen 1 and Gen 2. Maybe, it, maybe if, like, the, ne the next Direct afterwards doesn't have any info, like, and they hold off, uh,. Switch to news until like next year. Yeah, they might drop Gen two then. Yeah. If Gen, t if Gen, <laughs> if all three Gens, just GBA is also there, come out at the same time. I'm gonna. Yeah, that that'd be one way to basically tie people over. Yeah, that, cause that's like nine whole Pokemon. No, eleven whole Pokemon games. Red, blue, yellow, gold. Well, silver. realistically, you only need to play one or two, yeah. uh, one of each version. But gold, silver, crystal, ruby, sapphire, emerald, fire, red, leaf, green. Yep. And ideally, they don't have Pokemon Home connectivity. Well, ideally. Ideally. Yeah. The 3DS virtual console releases of Gen One and Two had Pokemon Bank connectivity, so why not? Um, I mentioned this in the car right here, but I've been playing Pokemon Swords DLC a lot. I've caught the Reggie Rock guys, The Reggie Trio. The Reggie Trio and the Electric one. I've caught... I can't pronounce it, but it's the Mass Rock Crystal. Suicune. Suicune. Um, I've encountered a Zapdos. Did not catch it, because... Because... My Pokemon keep my, the team of my Pokemon keep fucking dying on Dynamax Adventures. I've encountered Giratina, I believe. Oops, yeah, Reshiram, Cubrum, someone from Sun and Moon. Uh, you're you're talking about um the oh, Charisma. No. Something. Or no, wait, you said Ultra Beast. Never mind. Yeah, I don't. I, how, did, how did it look like? I don't know if it was an Ultra Beast. I mean, it was two words. And, I, and I'm not sure if it was an Ultra Beast or not. Oh, a Tapu? That, yeah, that one. Uh, was it Yellow... Yellow. Oh, it was Tapu Coco. Yeah, that one. That was the one. Yeah, they're they're just the legendaries there of the era. Yeah. Well, Guardian Deities, technically, is what they're called. And these Dynamax Pokemon have some exclusive Pokemon, depending if you're playing Sword or Shield. Like, since I'm playing Sword, I get, um, Dialga, Reshiram, Groudon, Ho-Oh, Groudon. 
the Sun mascot, I don't know its name. Solgalea. Solgalea and Xerneas from Eps. Um, and Shield gets the other ones. And then I I was doing research and I learned Ultra Moon for the 3DS has those exact opposite, the opposite legendary Pokemon for those ones. So oh, so they did what uh, Black and White 2 did. Yeah. Where, um, in Black and White 2, the legendary, the, the essentially the exclusives kind of switched. Yeah. But Ultraman was the second one, as opposed to the first. So I started playing Ultraman. It's, uh... I do know it's harder. I can't remember if I died. I haven't. I mean, it's like, uh, ge generally, yeah. the teams, uh, the the, poke, the trainer teams got updated. Yeah. I know everyone, uh, likes the Mew on one character stuffing a Pokemon into a bag. Lily, uh, yeah. talking about Nebby. Yeah, you're in the bag, Nebby. Get in the fucking bag. And the, one day I randomly... Funnily enough, in the, in, in the anime, uh... Nebby doesn't actually belong to, uh, to Lily. Okay. But I mean, uh, the, the person who ends up taking care of him the most is actually Ash. Mm. And Which is fitting, because... Just like with, uh... Like, the protagonist Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon... Eventually you kind of just take ownership. <laughs> yeah. And... Right Randomly, one day, I felt the urge, and I was like, you know what, I want to watch... My focus dropped. I want to watch the entire Pokemon anime, because I'm an idiot. Or, I'm a psycho. You know, you're not the only person I've seen that's been watching the Pokemon anime from the beginning. Yeah. So, I used this app called Pokemon TV. But oh, no! Then I learned it fucking shut down, like, two weeks later. So, I was like, fuck. I got six episodes in. Yeah, your best bet's piracy. Yeah. My suggestion is actually watch it in Japanese. Mm. I think I watch it in dub because it's funnier. The thing about the ja the thing about that is, by the time you get to the modern day stuff, you'll wish you're watching in Japanese. So you know, so yeah. you notice how um, the music is actually is actually really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's gone by then. Mm. Uh, along with that, you'll start missing out on cool shit like image songs. By that I mean. When the music kicks in during fights, because they decide it's a cool time to uh, mm. to start playing a character's theme and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. And uh, generally, the voice acting, from what I can tell, most people generally agree, kind of dips in quality around Gen three. Mm. What? Because they switched voice actors. Yeah, it gets back to better, but for a lot of people who grew up yeah. wa listening to the original dub, I think, I think dub actors and. I think people they, who like essentially like you start at the beginning, yeah. they have they have a hard time transitioning between the two. They just yank the license from four kids, if I recall correctly. That, uh, that's because it, the Pokemon Company was formed. Yeah. Uh, but but if you actually watch it in Japanese, everything's a lot more standardized, and you won't have things going like uh, a character going from one voice to fucking another. Which like the only times they do that is if someone died. I mainly watch dub for like. Yeah, it's 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 actually kind of an issue if you think about it because um. Japanese the, the, the Japanese respect their voice actors quite a bit. Yeah, I know. But that does mean that if a character's voice actor retires, they stop appearing. Yeah. I know. So you 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 know if you heard anything about Pokemon Journeys when people were returning. Like, you'd know that May seemingly just never bothered fucking showing up until the very end during the last battle. Yeah. And that's because her vo voice actress has been retired for mm. years. Well. So her last appearance in the anime, with, which was speaking, was in Diamond and Pearl, and shortly after that she retired. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm still going to watch it in dub because it's funny. Also, it also stops being funny. I don't care. It makes it funnier. No, th th it actually does stop being kind of funny after a while, because... Well, realistically, what you're thinking of is an Ash that's just being an immature little brat. Not just that. 
No, no, the, like, in, like that's... Uh, You're not going to... The writing it. around Ash actually gets significantly less, like, snarky, because he matures a lot. Yeah, I've noticed. And shit like Drawing Pan just kind of stops after mm-hmm. Pokemon Company takes over. So, after Hoenn. Well, if you want... If you want my prior experience with the anime, I start... When I, I start, think the funniest part after a while is literally the fact that they'll still censor stuff. When I started watching, Black and White was airing, so I watched that. Black and White in general was not good. Uh, I'm a Gen 5 kid, but... No, I'm talking about the anime. Yeah, the, an- the anime is literally known as the worst I time. was going to say I'm a Gen 5 kid, but yeah, it's kind of weak. So much so that Pikachu goes from taking down the Latios to getting his ass kicked by a, l- a fresh Snivy. I'm not even going to bring up the level thing, because levels don't exist in the anime, but this Snivy was literally just handed to Trip. Yeah. And then I dropped off during XY. I don't know why, I just kind of... Thought XY is literally considered the best season. I know, but I, I... I mean, not to me, personally, I love Alola a lot more. I just fell out of Pokemon around that time. And then, uh, I saw one... One look at Sun and Moon, and I thought it looked stupid, so I just did not watch that. But it's a really fun, light-hearted show. It's it's a lot more slice of life, a I, lot less adventuring, and it honestly gave Ash a lot of perspective on life that allowed him to mature enough that he started deserving to actually win. I know. Anyway, uh, so I watched it on Pokemon TV, and then the app fucking died. Like as I was, <laughs> as I le- learned, oh, I'll start watching it, and then I learned it's gonna die. I got six episodes in. It's stupid. Um. So I looked up. Uh, what, what streaming sites are these? Is this series on? And I, because I like to watch things on TV. Um. Netflix. It's on Netflix, by the way. Well, it is on Netflix, but especially because Pokemon Horizons is on Netflix, the newest season. But series, really. But. I can't talk. <laughs> but it turns out the seasons are all spread across different streaming services. Yep. Which is stupid, but I have all of them, so I can't complain, really. Netflix has season 1 and 23 to 25 journeys. Prime Video has gold and silver and diamond and pearl. Which, by the way, and that's really random, because gold and silver aren't actually a different se- And season 2. But I mean, like, the Indigo, the, the Indigo League, the Orange Islands, and gold uh, and the stuff from Johto, the Gold and Silver Sonic. Yeah, all of that's actually one show. Oh, and also Ruby and Sapphire and Black and White and Sun and Moon. Yeah, well, like, if you don't know, they they kind of rebrand the show every kind of generation. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, uh, they're essentially called like series in Japan. So that stuff is is called the the original series. Advanced Generation is R- Ruby, Sapphire, and the whole Battle Frontier stuff. Diamond and Pearls is, of course, Diamond and Pearl. Best Wishes, and which is Black and White and all that. You uh, can't tell, they both start with BW. Yeah. <laughs> Sun and Moon, yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada. Uh, uh, the, the XY series is Cow Saga, and uh, then there's, of course, Journeys, which yeah. doesn't correspond to any game. When I saw it, when I saw that they were uh, bringing back everyone, I was like, "Okay, I think they're starting to wrap up Ash's story." That was my first thought, when and you, they and they did because I'm a prophet. Around which she, series? Journeys, because they were, well, whichever one they were bringing back every character. Yeah, character. yeah. The, the, that just told me I think they're just I think they're actually starting to wrap this up. Well, think about it this way: like, look at what the, the goal for that season was. Have Ash win. Uh, take on the world champion. Mm. By the way, it was basically his rival for the yeah. season. Sun and Moon is also on Hulu and technically Disney Plus. Black and White is also on Tubi. What? I don't use Tubi. It's one of those free st- yeah. services that, like, you, you watch ads. Yeah. So, yeah, I have Netflix, I have Prime Video, I have Hulu. I'm golden. I'm set. But basically, I can use Netflix for the first and last seasons, and then Prime Video for literally everything else in between. <laughs> Anyways, um, I watched the uh, re-release of Star Wars Episode One. 
I ascended during the Duel of the Fate sequence because I walked in a, in the XD Auditorium. My opinions on the movie remain unchanged, though. Mm. It's bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It's fine. It would have been better had they put less effort on Jar on Jar Jar. Jar Jar, yeah. Like really, he, he basically could have been ridden out after a while. Nothing would have changed. I also watched the movie If recently, starring Ryan Reynolds. I liked it. Um. And I watched the new South Park special, End of Obesity. Oh yes, I watched that actually. It is fucking batshit insane. <laughs> it was pretty funny. For, it, is at, it is a breath of fresh air after fucking Snow Day. Yeah. I'm sorry, but Snow Day was... Okay, but to be fair to Snow Day, it did do one thing. It made it so that they didn't have to release a season that's, uh, during that time. Yeah. So they could move it over to the, uh, to the end of the year. Yeah. <sighs> But that game was just not Which funny. means that we're getting a fucking politics season. Awesome. Let's see how they handle it this time. I hope they sure... I hope they sure do, uh... I hope they... They don't base an entire fucking stor multi-episode storyline around the winner of an election that doesn't... Ends up not winning. Let's just hope that also Garrison we, somehow manages to get out of that fate. Don't... Don't clone him. Also, we got a dislike on the last video because of our political opinions. <laughs> Good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I couldn't care. Anyways. Um, like, uh, I hope to anyone who, like, disliked that video for political opinions, I hope you realize that I quite literally do not give a single fuck about that stuff. Anyways. Like, uh, ironically... People need to s touch some grass, and this is coming from someone who's criminally online. But realistically speaking... Yes, me now. You should, in fact, be very aware of what the fuck you're posting on the internet, people. Did you ever have that, like, talk about, like, how you gotta be aware of what you're posting, because if you, like, do shit, like, post pictures of you getting drunk and stuff like that, you'll get fired from your job and stuff like that? Yes. Anyways. Political opinions should be like that. Maybe... Don't go on racist rants, you fucks! Anyways, um, before we derail this conversation... Or better yet, do go on him! Add yourselves, that way we don't have to deal with you! Before we derail this conversation further, uh, End of Obesity was actually funny. It was really funny, Something yeah. Snow Day could only wish it achieves. And as much as it's, like, essentially built up as a Carmen special, in reality it's a Kyle special, surprisingly yeah. enough. Kenny but fucking died. Probably the first Kyle anything in a while. Yeah. Kenny died. Which... T Tony the Tiger killed Kenny. Honestly, the reason Kyle's probably been written off for a while is because the last time he had a major storyline, it was, like, the Heidi relationship. No, there was a Jew Hollywood thing. I said, like, storyline. Uh, yeah. Like, that, that was a episode. Yeah. Not a story. Um... But yeah, Kenny fucking died for the first time on screen since... 2020, a say. while, actually, yeah. Oh my god, Tony the Tiger killed Tony the Tiger killed Kenny. You bastard. Kyle with a gun, though. Yeah, Kyle, surprisingly, was like the main guy this time around. Yeah. And I also replayed City of Truth and got the Platinum Trophy on the PS4 version. Including those two damn achievements I can never get on Xbox 360, so I'm gonna have to replay the game on that, just, just, just so I can, so I can finally max out that damn list. Cause I know what to do this time. I use a walkthrough. Yeah. Yeah. No one will blame you. It was my seventh playthrough at this point, so I think I'm qualified to use a walkthrough. Cause. I checked my most recent Sitter Truth 360 save to see if it was like, uh, how many weapons do I have? How many clo what, 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 which ones am I missing? And I learned, I am missing literally one weapon and literally one clothing piece, and they were both missable. I was so upset.
Anyway. Anyways. Um. Uh, uh, we should probably actually discuss what the episode was about. It was about Ozempic. Ozempic. I don't know. Ozempic. Uh, so, l let's, let's bring this up. First of all, I maybe I'll drizzy. But also... <laughs> also, I have an intense fear of needles, so I had to look away a couple of times. Uh, yeah, uh, funnily enough, did you see that warning saying that it was... Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, the commitment. So, look, the actual story of the episode was... Uh, Carbon finds, about, uh, uh, finds out about his epic and all these other drugs that could, could essentially be used to stop weight, uh, weight gain. Uh, but, like, um, he realizes he's too poor because, canonically, yes, he is the second poorest kid at school. Yes, to Kenny. Yeah, which is funny. He gets he shits on Kenny all the time for it, but he's literally right next to him. Yeah. Um. And when he's he's like crying about it at school, Butter just like l realizes what's happening and uh, essentially asks Kyle for help. And Kyle, because he's the morally most upright character in the show, decides to actually try fighting the American healthcare system. We're navigating the American health care I don't know the beat. Yeah. There was a song. Butters ended up almost getting fucking... Uh, what's that one movie called again? Which one? Interstellar. Interstellar. Where he somehow managed to slip through the binds of reality to, like, essentially get... He got lost in the American health system. Healthcare system. Actually, By the way, the, the second I heard that, all, all I could do was uh, yell, "No!" Actually, there's a funny story related to uh, Interstellar and South Park, ironically. Um, so uh -huh. Interstellar was a co-production between Paramount and Warner Brothers, and uh, what? And Par it was originally just Paramount, at, but Warner Brothers wanted a hand on it because Christopher Nolan was involved, mm -hmm. and Warner Brothers and Paramount agreed. If Warner Brothers would would give up the rights to make any future South Park movies, <laughs> as well as any future Friday the Thirteenth movies, well, what a steal! We've had none of those. So about the Friday the Thirteenth, uh, that's because of a whole mess of yeah. fucking legal legal bullshit going around, which is why uh, but, it's only now. Yeah, that Jason's Jason able to, able to do anything in, in video games. Jason got in the multiverses. Yeah, I, that game came out yesterday. I played for eight hours. I still have it in me. Cool. Uh, anyway, I'll get to that after uh, we're done with South Park. Yeah. But uh, so continuing on. Um, yeah. Kyle basically realizes the game is fucking rigged from the start. Because so it's the American healthcare system. He decides to like literally buy the raw ingredients from out of the country and from there he starts manufacturing his own dr uh, his own uh, Zempic drugs yeah essentially kind of going into like a whole Walter White type moment only he's actually Jesse. trying to be good Jesse I need to <laughs> meanwhile um Randy Randy gets into this whole thing uh with the quote unquote Mills to South Park yeah, not gonna lie, it's really it was really weird seeing their abs, uh, like th their bodies, right? Yeah, because like that part was actually detailed well enough that y you know you'd think it belonged in a show of actual good animation, but then you look at their heads. Yeah. <laughs> their heads just don't look right on those types of bodies. Yeah. Um, but essentially, he kind of. Gets in with a bad crowd, uh, and just like with hard drugs, it literally turns them into gangsters. Yeah. And the fact that the doctor recognizes them because they keep exposing their stomachs. Yeah. Literally just so uh, so knowledgeable of that yeah. stuff that he's like. Also, this is a heavily abridged um, recap. Yeah. By the way, the reason like. Randy even got into this because he got into an argument with Shelly. Yeah, his daughter, if you don't know. Uh, meanwhile, with Sharon, she's basically, like, uh, she kind of gets... Ju she, she starts getting, um, like, worried about her own weight and stuff like that. Because uh, Randy stops eating thanks to being on a Yeah. 
and uh, she basically starts getting. Uh, she she basically gets recommended. Uh, fucking Lizzo. Yeah, for, for her own like uh, me- mental health. Which, by the way, I will say, as much as Lizzo is kind of a shitty person. Let's be honest here. Yeah. I will say she's probably one of the more like. She, she's one of the people who's l- least, uh, like, offended by the fucking yeah. South Park thing. She actually went along with the joke. Yeah. Lo- uh, Logan Paul did the same thing last last special. <laughs> which he actually... Well, let's be honest here, it's probably one of the smartest moves uh, Logan Paul has pulled. He actually made, like, a live-action remake of the Fred commercial. Not gonna lie, every time I see Prime on my fucking, like, store, all I can think is, I got credit, Fred bitch. <laughs> Whenever my sister... I, I said that to my sister, and then she's like, no, Randy Cox. Because <laughs> that was a jump scare. Yeah. <laughs> Just generally... Um, anyways, the, the, the Lizzo ends up giving her uh, diabetes, but, you know, stupid diabetes joke, Yeah. based on the idea that, like, she has diabetes in her ears because she's... It, uh, shitting out of her ear because quite literally uh, Lizzo's music at Corn South Park is terrible. I haven't listened so I wouldn't know. I've enjoyed the few songs that have been hits, but I'm not about I'm not about to like go two or four bat for thanks to the whole yeah. allegations on how she treats her employees. Yeah. Uh, but all I could say is the songs I've enjoyed are good, but they're not. Um, but I, but they're not good enough that I actively go listen to them on my own free time. Mm. Anyways, the whole point of the whole Lizzo thing is that it, like, one of the major plot lines is the sugar like industry. So big sugar, specifically big cereal, and like big uh, fucking snack cakes. Uh, are really pissed off about this whole Ozempic thing. Because it's cutting into their margins for people to stop wanting to eat sugar. Mm. But because, you know, if you know anything about sugar, about uh, cereals and stuff like that, sugar is literally the most addictive drug in the world. Everyone knows this. It's more addictive than, than fucking cocaine. Yeah. That's why the entire country's on this stuff. But, like, um... They, they essentially have, like, the cereal and snack cake mascots be, like, mob bosses. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, to the point where, like, Tony's name is Tony La Tigre. Yeah. They are great. Uh, and then they shoot, and up, they shoot up a factory. Yeah, they, they basically want to shut this whole thing down. So they shoot that Indian factory that uh, Kyle and the boys were getting their stuff. And that, le- and along with the 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 mothers of South Park uh, robbing them, that leads to them like having to like call essentially another shipment from a different factory in the United States. And after a Mad Max style like a uh, chase scene, uh, where a bunch of people die, including several of the moms. I don't think any of the ones who did die though were moms of important characters or even side characters. Because I noticed that, like, the moms that, like, you can identify, like, Butters' mom or, um, Wendy's mom or to- uh, Tolkien's mom, yeah. all survive that stuff. Yeah, because there's no way they would kill off the mother of an established character. They did it to Clyde, but they, gave, they gave him a stepmom. Well, he's Clyde, so he does Yeah. Uh, but, like, um, they basically only what killed I off meant, incidentals. What I meant was there's no way they just kill off a major character just like, like that. Yeah, they, they, they play it up a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but characters that they did kill off were incidentals, like the serial mascots and stuff like that. By the way, shout out to Twinkie the Kid having to try to put his stuffing back into his body after he got cut in half. <laughs> Tony the Tiger kills Kenny. Uh, yeah, and then he gets shot in the head. My sister was, like, snapchatting me her reactions to the thing, she was like, I, what the fuck is going on? If Kenny dies, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Why would she leave at that? I don't know. <laughs> Kenny's been dying forever. Uh, like, it's only in recent years where he hasn't been dying too much. 
Yeah. By that I mean ever since like season eleven. But like, <laughs> yeah. well, um, realistically, if you actually t- put into consideration, he's uh, it, like it, with the whole ser- the whole history of the series. Uh, he's died less than he has. I know, because my sister was like, I, I, my sister, I, I don't, I, I Maybe she just doesn't like the joke. I, I, I left, I lost my train of thought. Anyways. Um, anyways, it, the ultimate resolution is... There's a fucking guy in, the, in this truck, and it's the, the same guy from the American the, the, system. Yeah, basically, uh, the fucking insurance industry tells them... You realize that it's not just the medical and, like, doctors that we're, uh, we're working with. We're also working with the pharmaceutical industry. And, uh, if you really want to go further with this whole making drugs for yourself type of thing, you're going to have to go through the American healthcare, healthcare system. system. And, what do the, and what do the kids learn from this? The, the, what the kids learn from this is basically, hey, maybe we, we should stop making fun of fat people on the basis that, quite literally, even with all the determination in the world, l- there are literal giant organization conglomerates pr- uh, going out of their way to make sure that you would never get out of that fucking cycle. No matter how hard you try, it is damn near impossible unless you are rich enough to get out of it. And Cartman uses that opportunity to make fun of everybody. And Before fly- he flies off, off to Pakistan... Pakistan. <laughs> and probably gets killed. Uh, but the, uh, the the resolution to the B-plot of this episode is after Randy gets away from the moms because he's the one that initiated the chase by realizing they've gone way too fucking far. Yeah. Um, he, make, he makes up with his wife about the whole thing, tells her the truth, and uh, she's, she realizes that, like, she, because he basically tells her, you don't need to, like, do this stuff. I like you the way that you are. And then they go and get high on Molly at the Holiday and yeah. that they did in high school. Essentially, the first time in literal ages where Sharon and Randy end an episode better off than where they started. <laughs> we live in a society. Like, realistically, if they kept going the way that they were, you would have wondered why they didn't actually go ahead with that fucking divorce back in uh, back during the shit episodes. Because... But seriously, like... Yeah, I know. Unironically, we needed a moment like this as to why they're still together, essentially. But don't you remember when they killed each other in Minecraft? Look, you gotta be honest here. There are way more moments of her basically de- being done with his bullshit than yeah. anything else. It's basically become one of her running traits. Which, to be fair... Is only because of the fact that the writers keep using Randy for their B plots. Yeah. Or A plots. Because for literal several seasons, he was basically the main character. Yeah. Anyway. So, let's be let's just be happy that in recent years, they've realized that people actually really like the boys and stuff like that. They actually want to see the main characters being fucking used for storylines. Yeah. And also, speaking of South Park, real quick, uh, I've had the realization that the re-release of the movie is in less than four weeks. Dear God. I'm tempted I'm tempted to wear the suit to that. But yeah. I switched to the 7 p.m. showing on Sunday instead of 4 p.m. because there are more people showing up. Fair enough. And also, it's easier in timing. Um, I can't wait to embarrass myself. No. Anyway, uh, onto this obscure indie game I've been playing recently, Multiverses. Hmm. I got. Is this the first one? As a. Yeah, it is. This is a day off. Ah. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Jason Voorhees got added to the game. Which... <laughs> By the way, they give you a vacation literally a single day. Yeah. Which, Fuck uh... You guys. <laughs> that, surpri- that surprised me because that IP's been in legal bird toy for, like, years now. 
it shut down. It paused like Friday the 13th, the game to stop updating. Mm -hmm. When they were about to add a Jason X skin. And you know what the first skin they added for Jason in this game is? X? X. Yeah. Yeah. I have his, I have a, a giant machete right here. It's not a Jason knife, but... You're really... It's... Other... It's so sad that this kid literally has no idea what the fuck a vacation is. He's been working, in, like, yeah. every fucking day. <laughs> yeah. Um... And, you know, I was like, the game's not going to be as big as it was when the beta launch. It got 100,000 concurrent players on Steam. So much so that the servers actually crashed. And I had to go outside and touch the grass. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Um. Snooze land. Literally, man just said, I'm going to use my day off to fucking sleep. Oh, you might be wondering where all this stuff is, uh, even though we, we've only seen, like, two fucking rooms. Right? Yeah. Ow. Um, here's a hint. End of the game. Hmm. Yes, go to sleep. Um, what are we supposed to do with the day off? Nothing. Just practice. Uh, okay. I can't talk. Right. <laughs> I literally just heard sleep and more work, and he's like, "I don't want. I don't think I want either." But <laughs> yeah. I want to actually use my day off. <laughs> um. I don't know, what are you supposed to do? Ice cream. Man literally only has one idea for life. So yeah. Characters. You might not recognize, but concerning the little, what what's next to him, this is a uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 minigame reference. Mm. Remember that minigame where you have to throw, uh, keep a ball in the air? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. I see. Uh, no, you don't know me. He technically does. He's the only one who's actually encountered us before. Um... Technically. Well, it's nice to meet you. I'm Ollet. Thanks. I don't give a shit. Um, like, it's a... This is a good thing to point out. It's a good thing that this game establishes that he does get to meet them before he ever gets to the virtual world. Mm. Because, depending on how much, depending on where you are in the game, for yeah. two, uh, like, yeah. you, you'll notice how they'll, they'll talk about how they have no idea what they're feeling and stuff like that. Yeah. And you're wondering, how the fuck does the virtual world get give them actual feelings about, it, about Roxas, right? And uh, it's because they've met him. <clears throat> They don't remember him, because just like with what happened to Sora, since he's been essentially erased, yeah. no one remembers him. Mm. Yeah. But, just like with Sora, once you've met someone, you kind of subconsciously remember them, even when they're erased from you. Yeah. Which is uh, why Kyrie's still like certain that Sora's out there, even though she has no idea who, who or what Sora is. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a giant pop scroll for a second. But no, it's a sword. Uh, yeah. There's always a reason to be mean. Ah!
here. You know, I'd be, I'd probably be better at this uh, if it didn't revolve around this game. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Anyways, uh, apart from, apart from Jason Voorhees, there was more characters announced, including everybody saw this coming: the Joker. Why wouldn't they have the Joker? They have a billion other DC characters. I don't know. I'm there, but... Uh, but hey, he's voiced by Mark Hamill, so that's cool. That's weird. Probably just he's an archive voice now. It's fresh and recorded voice lines. I say that. Okay, that's definitely weird. Mark, if I correctly, Mark did yeah. Mark say that he he wouldn't want to play without yeah. without Kevin in the yeah. role. Though. Unless uh, Kevin's uh, the voice for the Batman. He is the voice for the Batman. Uh, well, that makes more sense then. Like, yeah. There's also a possibility that he recorded the lines before he dies. But yeah. But who knows if Batman will get any voice lines. Um, after that, uh, in his gameplay fair, people spotted the Powerpuff Girls in the fire list. People were like, okay, they're going to be the next character unveiled. And the next character unveiled was a fucking banana guard from Adventure Time. Uh, and people were, uh... People were like, this is this is like if the only Mario players in Smash for Mario, Luigi, and Piranha Plant. Because we got banana before... I don't know, Marceline? Princess Bubblegum? Ice King? Yeah, I wouldn't be happy if the fucking banana card came in before, like, Marceline. He, it did. The fucking banana. That fuck-ass banana. Marceline is literally one of the most important characters in this series. And you're telling me that you flipped the fucking the banana, banana card? <laughs> yeah, everyone was so pissed. Because, like, the day, the day before, I believe, there was a trailer, and they... And for a split second, he was visible. And people were, people were, there was a split between, okay, he's actually in the game, or, okay, he's a placeholder, so they don't actually leak anyone, because he he's already an assist character. And the next day, he was confirmed to be a real fighter. I'm sorry to say this, but there's a reason why Smash doesn't put in any of their assist characters. In the game, they're a fucking assist character in... I want, I've grown to accept it. But before Marceline, really. That's disrespectful. Yeah. I guess it does prove the idea that anyone is possible. Fuck you. But Banana... But hey, they revealed Jason Voorhees right after, so we're good. And Agent Smith from The Matrix. Before Neo... Sure. Let's see if I can get it to 100. <laughs> um. Fucking banana guard. And I told my sister, who was a huge Adventure Time fan, and she was like, You're fucking joking, are you? And I told her, No. They actually added the fucking banana. And she was like, No. This isn't real. I don't blame your sister for, for thinking that. And I told my social worker about it, and she's like, you're fucking kidding me. You... Exact words. Why do I have the feeling it's more like, you're fucking kidding me, this is what you're going to be telling me about t today? <laughs> this? Right. Not like anything actually important? Well, it was when we were just not doing anything. Fair enough. Yeah. Sometimes we have conversations there. They're a Pokemon fan as well, so... Like, for for context here, this is like having a fighting game where you are like choosing fucking no no better get better context. Think about it this way: you are playing a Legend of Zelda game, mm -hmm. and. Bef they, they allow you to play multiple characters, so essentially th think like Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. But instead of allowing you to play like, oh, I don't know, someone like Sheik, they give you fucking 
Bokoblin. Yeah. This is our third Adventure Time character. And it's a goddamn... By the, okay, I'll stop, but like... Seriously, before more... Uh, I have to like choose some, someone who like... Um, like, kind of... Had, an, had a lot of importance in Zelda, but not Zelda because... Well, it's not like... Yeah. It's not like Marceline's the main love interest or anything like that. Before Marceline, before Ice King, Princess Bubblegum, who are all very important characters... We got a fucking banana with a spear. I will stop because I care. I played banana guard this morning and I dragged the Jason off screen. So, and they rage quit the match as a result. Did the same to with Le LeBron James, except I dragged them on, on top of the screen. They just killed themselves because they lost to a fucking banana. I think I might name banana guard. But, yep. And of course, when a new game comes out, uh, people people want to data mine it to see, oh, what else are they going to add? People have data mined it to see what else they're going to add. Nothing. Nine further characters were discovered in data mines. And I'm listing what I've, what's been found. Who knows if these will actually happen, but these have been found. So, the Powerpuff Girls, all as a single fighter. As opposed to three separate fires like Punch Time Explosion. AKA Bad Game. Uh, Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory, who already has a stage in the game. Samurai Jack from Take a Wild Guess. Uh, Mojo Jojo from Powerpuff Girls, who is already a stage hazard. Uh, Marceline from Adventure Time, thank god, but she really should have gotten in before Banana Guard. Daffy Duck, about damn time. Aquaman from DC Comics. Uh, Ruby Rose from Ruby, I thought they were selling off at IP. Yeah, no, I thought they were selling that one off too. But Last I time I checked, they were. Rooster Teeth is dead, but I guess they're still owning it, but... They own it for now, but like... Yeah. Last time, everyone was kind of assuming that it was going to be sold off. Yeah. Especially considering... Unless they have a deal to keep her in the game, and then... Maybe it's just... Maybe they still own the license to, uh... Video games, which... Yeah. Is WB selling Ruby? Because, like... Carrie implied that, like... That they have a buyer interested already. Yeah. Carrie's one of the main writers. Though supposedly they have, they do have a new investor to continue to continue the series. They said investor, but like, not owner. No. I know Death Battle like already has a plan going for for this. Yeah. It involves them doing a lot less CG and a lot more sprite work. Yeah. Saves money. So, like... That's weird, because, I, again, unless... I guess they're... Un unless they have a deal to, like, keep her in the game, even if they sell her off, sell off Ruby. Like I said, maybe they ha maybe they kept the video game rights. Maybe, yeah. That's uh, but yeah. Or maybe they're just licens li licensing it off. Yeah. Probably just owning it, but licensing it. And have someone else do the work. Um, I mean, they already did the whole crossover with DC. Maybe they just yeah. like, well, we already did that. We might as well keep it for now. Apparently, they were going to do a crossover with Scooby Doo. That's hit hit the axe. Probably for the best, really. Yeah, Scooby Doo and Ruby Two is the name or something. And the last fighter. <laughs> It'd be funny if like, considering the importance of main characters. It'd be funny if they if they cut if they if it was for the most part just Team Ruby, but Jean is kept around explicitly as the Scoop the Scooby stand in, yeah. because uh, as much as I like Jean, it would make sense that they'd literally compare him to a dog. And the last fighter found was Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. 
he wasn't the very first lead screenshot, but there were some copyright issues going around that time, so they finished him but couldn't release him. So I guess they have figured that out. I've already gone this far, I'm not about to go further. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Ruby Rose is a bit is probably the most surprising one out of them. I know that Ruby's still like Literally being used as a fucking VTuber. Yeah. But I think the, the licensing on that's also going to run out eventually. I guess this is the this is the first technically anime character we have in the game. And also, Rick and Morty have new voice lines. Probably because they have the new voice actors. They do have the new voice actors. Thank God. Rick's like, oh, what's this crossover IP synergy going on? Let's be honest here. The only reason they they could only use archive footage is because fucking, like... Justin Roiland. Yeah, he he has a bit of an ego. Yeah. But now they have freshly recorded dialogue. Because they have new people there who yeah. don't have massive egos. And Rick was like, oh shit, is that Wonder Woman? <laughs> and Data Mind voice line shows, like, you got... Apparently, talking to Finn, he'll he'll go. Uh, now go make out with your dog. I've read those fan fictions, or something like that. Well, that's his brother. Fuck you. Hmm. Although, and then again, one of the most popular ships that fucking came out of the ending and distant lands was Finn Bronwyn, which that's not good. Yeah. That's his literal fucking like brother. No, Bronwyn is uh. The granddaughter of Jake. Oh. Uh, you. Yeah. And, uh... The uh, reason is because when Distant Lance came out, before, you know, Fiona and Kate came out... Yeah. The last time we saw Finn before his death in the third episode... Yeah. Uh, was him as an adult, but not the... Not as grown as he was in Fiona and Kate, so... Before that... Hmm. With uh, Bronwyn having become his uh, adventuring partner, uh, because at this point Jake had already died, he already had the tattoo and everything. Uh, but his, his appearance there was basically just him coming out of the of the shower. So people started joking around about the whole thing. And then people actually started pushing for it. Uh, then Fiona and Kate came out with an even older Finn, uh, outright stating that he's still Hunter Susan, because that was kind of like the major thing. People didn't know if he was still with her or not. Yeah. Which is... Fiona and Kate basically all but stated that they're, they're soulmates. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Like, yes, the, the the last love interest introduced is literally the one that'll actually win. Because seemingly in the in the whole multiverse, whenever you encounter a Finn, uh, an HW ain't exactly that far behind. Yeah. Hmm. Like, it's not... It's not entirely confirmed, but considering how it's implying that, like, Fiona's love interest is, you know, Hunter, the the male Hunter's wizard, and, uh, then there's the whole, literally, farm world Finn having a kid that looks suspiciously like it, like they could be uh, Hunter's wizard's kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's basically all that's stated. Yeah. The, this many ber same people fall in love with the same people, it's, it's kind of just yeah. outright stating it, you know? There's also a voice line from Rip that's apparently directed towards Ruby, and he calls her Little Miss Anime. You know, they really wanted Rick to be the, to, to like be the whole smartest person and just edgy as fuck. He could basically like insult her in ways that would uh, get her acting like season nine. <laughs> voice lines for the Powerpuff Girls were also found, and they all have their original voice actors from the '98 series. Good. Thank God. Uh, voice lines for Samurai Jack were also found. And... There was another one. Aquaman. And... Wicked Witch of the West from Wizard of Oz. Mm. Beetlejuice. From... Yeah. The new movie. <laughs> They're probably gonna save it. Save it. Save him until the movie comes out. What did you think of that trailer? Um, I see it before every movie I go to now. Yeah, what did you think of it? I've never actually watched the first movie, so... That... I'm more familiar with the fucking musical, if that tells you anything about how I feel about this. 
Hmm. I remember my mom, I was watching a movie with my, a trailer with my mom, and she she recognized it, and she was like, holy shit, they're making Beetlejuice too." Um, yeah. I'm not entirely sure how to feel about this. It's a sequel. I'll, I'll, I'm on the wait and see list here. Yeah. It's usually how I approach most things. Especially nostalgia sequels. Yeah. Sure, you can get a Top Gun Maverick. But, uh... You could also get, like, a... Sharp Boy and Lava Girl tale. Yeah. Uh, I rewatched the movie Sky High recently. Well, it's a work of art. <laughs> Speaking of My Hero Academia... <laughs> uh, it's coming to an end. I, I've heard. Wow. Like, the most recent chapter... The main bad guy lost. Damn. Like, both of them. The, yeah. All for one essentially died, and Shigaraki faded from existence. Mm. Because his dust quirk... His, his destruction quirk essentially backed up on him. Yeah. Granted, Shigaraki was actively wanting to die at that point, because it's either that or having his body stolen by the fuck that, like... Yeah. Fuck, ru fucking ruined his life. Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah, the, the director for the game was also interviewed, and he was asked about... Also, Izuku almost certainly lost his, his power. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see if it comes back or not. Yeah. He was asked about, uh... Will third-party characters be added to the game? Specifically asking Walter White, because he is a very common request for some reason. And he said, third party is a bit trickier. But he'll try. Remember, Paramount fucking contacted them and said, Hey, you want to add Spongebob? And the reason they said no is because uh, they thought it would be rude to be a uh, Nick All-Star World Devs. More integrity than Nick right now. <laughs> they, they really just turned around and said, Hey, we just made a new game. Um, hey! You want to add Spongebob? To the Steam with Cartoon Network characters? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? My package arrived. I'm, 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 I'm asking Kevin if you can pick it up. And people are going to be like, Oh my god, Nick Logan and Cartoon Network in the same game? Wow. But you know, they're writing all these characters, and we still got fucking banana first. Yeah, I don't know. This is um, the same issue. <laughs> but hey, my most wanted was Daffy Duck, so he's in. Ooh, should have been there way, way earlier. I know. He's literally like the Who, who got in before him from Looney Tunes again? Tasmanian Devil and Marvin the Martian. Dabby Devil should have gotten in there before Taz. LeBron James, do you want to count that? I do not. <sighs> but definitely before he's, LeBron too. He's literally the Luigi to Bugs as Mario. Yeah. Which tells you just how misguided this fucking roster is. Okay. Yeah. Fucking banana. Well, look, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Warner Brothers, you have to come to understand, Joe characters do not come before the primary, ma like, ma main characters. Sure, they could be at the end of, like, a DLC run. Yeah. But uh, they're not meant to be the last. Or, first. or, like, they're not, uh, but they're also not meant to be first. Yeah. Oh, well, they announced Jason right after, and everyone, kind of, almost everyone forgave him. But people are still like, we got Banana before Marceline. And that's like the one takeaway I have from that. Well, yeah, well, let's be honest here. Well, well, then let's actually be honest here. As much as I did the whole, well, not comparing uh, her to like Zelda, because not yeah. loving, not many lemmages and all that. She's like one of the more popular. She is literally, like, 
probably like the second or even maybe the most recognized character from that series. Yeah. Like she's at, she's definitely in the top three because the other top two are Finn and Jake. Yeah. So someone puts the other like a usual spreadsheet of of most requested characters because there's a in the official multiverse and if we're just on like rule 34 she's the most popular because so in the official multiverse's discord there's a channel called character requests where the staff reads them but you know they can't have everyone and Banana Dard had only 31 votes and he was not even in the top top 100 or top 500 meanwhile Marceline is she on here? Shit, is she on here? <laughs> uh, you shouldn't be having to... Yes, bo- Marceline was 21st with 1,732. <laughs> you shouldn't... You shouldn't have to be asking for a major character like Marceline. You know who the fans want. You say you read all the de- the requests. It, I, uh, Funny banana. Who even likes banana guards? I don't know. Like the the whole joke is they're just kind of there. They're stupid. Oh well. Yeah. But yeah, the number one most requested character is Ben Ten at the moment. As he should be. Yeah. Downside, I know for bad why he's not in. <laughs> too complicated. He is literally just, like, obnoxiously complicated if you really start to come out. And, there, and data miners have also found there's going to be a Titan's Tower stage. Teen Titans show version. I'm so sorry. And the Warner Brothers Water Tower as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a Shark Week event. Which it would be the first pawn down from the Discovery side of things. What the fuck does Discovery even have? Like, I remember interviews said, Wow, we have access to a whole new wealth of franchises now. And I'm, I was like, what the fuck does Discovery even own? Because it's discovering like Animal Planet, really. Yeah. So I looked at it and I learned they own Food Network. So I was like, okay, Guy Fury. Uh, number two most requested is Walter White from Breaking Bad. Third party character. Mm-hmm. People are iffy on him being added because his whole show revolves around drugs. Also, you won't really, you know, play it well. Yeah. Uh, do you think we should end the episode here? Yeah. I do want to list these top ten at least. Okay. Uh, number three is Rigby from Regular Show. Fuck. What? I think he just booted up the manual. Okay. Uh, number four is Mordecai from Regular Show. Number five is the Animaniacs as a single fighter. Six is Gumball. Seven, Jack, Samurai Jack. Uh, eighth is Robin. Ninth is Daffy Duck. Let's do that so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And tenth is Jaro from DC Comics. Ha, <laughs> Jaro. You know who that is, right? No, but there's a picture of him. So, Jaro is a sorrow who was put in a jar... And eventually, essentially grew its own consciousness, and now it's a Robin. Hmm. I see. It's literally a member of the Matt family. Interesting. Well, uh, I don't know what else to say. Yo, Freddy Fazbear's on there, that's nice. Anyway, see you. What? I'm gonna go. I don't know.